Welcome to Live with the Author. I'm Amanda Goodwin, and I'm one of the co-editors of Reading Research Quarterly. And we have with us today one of our wonderful special issue authors, Rebecca Silverman. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, it's so wonderful to have you here, Rebecca. And I really enjoyed reading your article, which is entitled Beyond Decoding, a meta-analysis of the effects of language comprehension interventions on K-5 students' language and literacy outcomes. And if you want to read that article, you can find it, a link to it on our special issue page. So Rebecca, you and I go way back and we've been talking about language for a long time. How did you get into thinking about the science of reading and language? So I, I was a teacher first, and part of what my teaching experience included was feeling like there were clear, I should say, sort of clear guidelines about how to teach phonics, but feeling like there weren't very clear guidelines about how to support language comprehension. So I've always been interested in the part of the science of reading that has to do with how to support kids' understanding of what they hear and read in school. Very cool. I love that you were a teacher first. And it's funny because I had the same experience where I was like, oh, I can just teach. There's 26 letters. You know, there's a manageable number of sounds, but there's 200,000 words or like lots of complicated ways they're being used. Um, and so that, like the different ways that words are being used brings me to my next question, which is the science of reading can be described as many things to different people. What is the science of reading to you? So to me, the science of reading represents a real interdisciplinary body of knowledge about how reading and writing develop and also how to support reading and writing through instruction. And it includes um, a wide range of kinds of research, a wide range of uh, kinds of instructional models that have been investigated, and a wide range of audiences, including parents, caregivers, and teachers. Um, so it's a, it, it seems to me like it's a, it's a vast um, enterprise, the science of reading, that uh, we still have a lot, to, a lot to learn. Is there a line, like if, we, if we're thinking about the science of reading as vast and interdisciplinary, is there a line where like things become less sciencey of reading? -y? I think it's, science is um, an interesting word. So I think it's lots of different perspectives and ways to reflect on how language and literacy develops and how it can be taught. And I think that all of those different perspectives can um, help us understand the process and understand how to teach reading and writing better. So I don't think that, um, I think that there's been a narrow definition of what science is, randomized control trials, for example, experimental studies, but I think all forms of science um, can help us understand this, um, this very unique uh, human experience better. I love it. And so when we think about better understanding the science of reading, what does your article add to our understanding? So our main focus in this article was to first, first of all, to point out that um, there is a lot more to the science of reading than just decoding, which is what the debate is often centered around. Um, and that a huge part of what we know about the science of reading has to do with language comprehension. And so our uh, motivation was to really dig into the science and try to understand better what do we know about language comprehension, particularly about how to support language comprehension through instruction. And so what we did is we reviewed the literature. Um, we focused on the last 10 years since the Common Core State Standards, because as you know, the Common Core focused on language comprehension in a way that previous sets of standards hadn't um, as much. And so we wanted to see in the last 10 years, what is the research telling us about how to support language comprehension um, and to us, the most important news, what I guess you can call it news from this, uh, from our review, is that language comprehension does lead to gains for kids in both language and literacy. And so it's worth teachers' time and effort to focus on that. We also, though, noticed, noted that um, studies so far have shown limited effects on uh, standardized measures. So this would be like state measures. Um, and what we hypothesized looking at the research base is that um, these measures aren't capturing um, what development is occurring for kids. And also they might not have been conducted long enough for us to really understand how language develops over time. You know, language develops from birth, 
And if we just do short-term interventions, is that really uh, going to have an impact on children's language and literacy development? We might need longer interventions to support that. So those are some of the things that we uncovered in this article. Yeah, and so it makes me think longer interventions, but also possibly like longer times for post-tests, allowing the learning to sort of accumulate and be used because, you know, language is that thing that we communicate with. And so the more that we use it, theoretically, it seems like we'd be improving with it across time. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's um, been discussion about how language development isn't an all or nothing prospect. You know, in decoding, if you learn the letter A, you can say the name of the letter and the sound of the letter, you know the letter. Whereas with vocabulary, morphology, syntax, you're learning it gradually over time. And every time you hear a word, you grow in your understanding of that word. Every time you hear a word part or a new syntactical construction, you're growing in your understanding of it. So it might take longer for that to sort of gel. Interesting. So what can teachers do tomorrow based off of your article and its findings? So the major point of the article was just to draw more attention to language comprehension and to kind of put out a call for teachers to focus on language comprehension as, as a, an important part of their um, instruction. There were a few nuggets that we did in, um, uncover in this review that I think may have implications for teachers. Um, one was that um, focusing on language as a multi-component construct um, can be helpful to kids. So I started out as primarily a researcher who focused on vocabulary, um, but I quickly learned that just focusing on vocabulary, you know, teaching a child a definition of a word isn't enough. Like putting that vocabulary in context, talking about the parts of the word, talking about how that word is used in different sentences and different paragraphs to make meaning, that kind of approach um, to a more comprehensive view of language may be beneficial for kids. So I think that was one important um, finding that we uncovered. Um, and then the other part was that um, there, is a, there is a potential benefit for leveraging technology to provide both visual and auditory representations uh, for promoting language comprehension. So um, particularly for um, kids who are learning language, um, having the audio and visual representations in sort of digital media enhance their ability to learn language. And so thinking about how we can leverage technology um, in language comprehension instruction may be fruitful for teachers. Those both sound so important. And so, I mean, they almost sound complementary too, because it seems like technology can give us a way of representing multifaceted word knowledge and use of words as tools. Indeed, yeah. Very cool. So what does your study mean for principals and policymakers? So I, I think the major um, implication for principals and policymakers is that there needs to be a focus on language instruction, not just on decoding. You know, when we have uh, bills that go to, um, to provide mandates for how literacy instruction should be taught, how teachers should be prepared to teach literacy, um, there needs to be a focus on language comprehension as well. And so, um, you know, in the process of thinking about, you know, what kinds of um, mandates are we going to have at a policy level? That should be part of the conversation. And for principals in terms of thinking about what kind of professional development do I need to have? What kind of curricula do I need to have? There needs to be a specific focus on language comprehension as well as decoding. Yeah, and I'm so glad you said language comprehension. And I'm gonna tie that back to that multifaceted um, approach because I so often hear principals and policymakers say, but my teachers have vocabulary tests. My teachers teach a list of words with the basal reader, with the story. Is that the kind of thing that you're talking about? Definitely not. Um, what we've learned from uh, the instructional and intervention research is that um, focusing on language in very meaningful um, context and supporting kids' ability to use that language in conversation and talking about text and writing about text is a much more fruitful way to support language comprehension than just teaching uh, definitions of words. Definitions of words, um, it just provides kids that short-term memory of you know what a word means they learn it for the test and they forget it but being able to use that word to use that language to understand text and to talk about text and to write about text that's really the kind of um a focus on language comprehension that we're talking about i love it so now you've been i bet you've been out in a bunch of different classrooms is there a classroom or an experience that you can recall where you walked in you're like yes this is the language comprehension that i envisioned and dreamed about and the science of reading suggests. Sure, so I think um, 
there are some teachers who do this all the time in their instruction. And so it starts from, uh, you know, I'm thinking of the elementary context specifically, that's what I really focus on. I'm thinking of teachers that in their morning meeting, they start a conversation about a rich topic that is important to kids' lives. And they promote kids' understanding of uh, different words and different language constructions within that context. Then they move on to building on that with a read aloud where they're focused on the rich language in the read aloud. They stop and ask questions about that language. They um, talk about words specifically. They ask kids to turn and talk using the words and the language that they're um, instructing on. And then they carry that language comprehension focus throughout the day. So whether they're doing discussions about text, whether they're doing small group projects, even in content area instruction, they're focusing on words and bringing kids attention to the language that they're hearing um, across content areas. And all of those experiences create what we think of as a really language rich classroom where language is part and parcel of what the kids are learning um, in all aspects of their instruction. And what the kids take from that is that language is important and I can use it to make effective uh, use of comprehension and even expression um, to be able to contribute to class discussions. It's so important. Um, and so that kind of brings me to parents. What does this study mean for parents? So as children's first teachers, um, parents should be encouraged to not just focus on letters and sounds. I think parents feel this pressure to, to make sure their kids are learning to read. But what I would like parents to understand is that it's not just about letters and sounds, it's also about the supporting the language that um, they're using with their kids, that the kids are hearing in their environment. And so having conversations about things that kids are interested in and promoting them, extending that language and using rich language in those conversations um, is very much a part of teaching kids to read. And so parents can focus on um, how to support conversations, how to talk at the dinner table, um, rather than just thinking about, oh, do I need to do flashcards for my kids to learn words? So important. And what does this mean for researchers? How do we continue to like move the field forward in this way? So our article shows that there are some major gaps in the research base on language comprehension. Um, so for example, um, there's a lot less uh, focus on language comprehension in upper elementary school. Um, so there's more research on K2, less on grades three, five. So that's a, an area where we need more research. Um, there also isn't enough research to really be able to tease apart specific practices. So while we have these kind of comprehensive studies of uh, lots of different methods that we've tried, we don't know which ones of those are more or less supportive of kids' language comprehension. And so research can really focus on helping us tease that apart a little bit. Um, but I think the biggest part is that we need a lot more research on supporting language comprehension with kids from diverse backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, our article suggests that focusing on language comprehension can be helpful for specific groups of learners. For example, English learners really seem to benefit in classrooms that focus on language comprehension specifically. But we also found that some interventions um, that have tried to support language comprehension don't necessarily have a huge benefit for children from low income backgrounds in terms of being able to help them catch up to their peers from middle and upper income backgrounds. So in order to support literacy development for all students, researchers really must include diverse populations in their studies so that we can understand how to support language comprehension a lot in lots of different contexts with kids from lots of different backgrounds. So important. And, you know, I've learned so much as we've been chatting, especially about this idea of language comprehension as important, but also multifaceted language comprehension. And I have this sort of bigger picture of how to integrate it across the whole school day. And then also as a parent, how to integrate it into my, you know, dinner conversation, or even when I'm driving the kids around, we're going to have some deeper conversations about different things rather than just how was your school day? Um, I'm going to go put that into practice. What are some of the takeaway messages that you want us to leave with? So my biggest takeaways are that supporting language comprehension is important. It needs to be a focus for parents. It needs to be a focus for teachers. We need to be thinking about how to support this um, because once kids learn to decode, they need to be able to understand the rich language that's all around them and that they're going to experience in um, increasingly complex texts throughout school. Um, the second is that there are some indications in the science of reading as to how to support uh, language comprehension for kids. And so we should 
be guided by those in terms of um, how, what we do for teacher education, for professional development, uh, for designing curriculum. Um, and then finally, um, and importantly, uh, we need much more research to be focused on this so we can really help teachers understand uh, the best, best methods, especially for children from diverse backgrounds uh, for supporting language comprehension. Yeah, I mean, I think all those are such important pieces. Thank you so much for being here with us, Rebecca. And again, if you'd like to learn more about Rebecca's article, you can find it um, in our special issue, and it's entitled Beyond Decoding, a Meta-Analysis of the Effects of Language Comprehension Interventions on K-5 Students' Language and Literacy Outcomes. So Rebecca, thank you so much for being with us, here with us today. And I look forward to trying this stuff out and integrating this stuff in my work with teachers and teacher candidates, um, students, and even my own kids. Thanks so much, Amanda.